Speaking of the other woman that you alluded to uh, before, the nun, you said she was satanically, ritually abused as a kid. Yes. This is the sort of thing when that phrase comes up, mm-hmm. the really respectable liberal people will tell you, oh, that's a ridiculous conspiracy theory. That's ins- that doesn't happen. Get off your tinfoil hat. There's no satanic ritual abuse that goes on. And yet, it does. Oh, oh yes. Why would they have reason to say that? How can you disprove something just because you haven't seen it? This, that's not logical. This is the part that a lot of people who are a little more secular or skeptical of all these, this is the part that they often get hung up on. It's not that someone would sexually abuse somebody else. It's not that someone would beat somebody else. It's not that someone would murder somebody else. It's that they would do it at, in a satanic ritual. That's the part that seems so absurd. If this, if this is just a material world and we're all just bags of chemicals, why would people engage in satanic ritual abuse? And what even is that? Okay, so satanic ritual abuse is when usually it's a family member, like a parent or a grandparent. Usually it's, a, it's not the parent, but a, a relative who takes the child and performs a ritual abuse, like a rape on a baby, which involves blood, and they consecrate the child to the devil. Why would you do that? Because it gives them great power. The devil asks for payment. What are you going to give me? I want one of the kids. And so they do. And they don't have to actually murder them. Although sometimes there are SRA victims who are killed. Halloween is the number one time of year for the most human sacrifice to the devil on the planet. People go, that's ridiculous. Halloween's just about candy. It's not. In fact, in New York City... Father Labar was telling me that it's the number one week leading up to Halloween where the most uh, homeless go missing. There's these unmarked vans that come around and offer to take them to shelters and get meals for them, and they just bind them and they keep them and they satanically uh, sacrifice them on Halloween. Who does this? These are people in occults. You know? Um, they keep hidden. I mean, obviously, if they were mainstream, that would be a bigger problem. Sure. But if that day comes, you know, then I'm going underground. Yeah. But they, they're out there. And, uh, you know, when I went off to exorcism training in Rome, um, the things, these are seasoned exorcists that have been doing this for 20, 30 years that come in to teach what they've learned and what they've experienced. One of the most interesting things was um, a case of a doctor, a medical doctor in Rome, who was invited to go to a party, and they said, you know, there's a way you can like triple your income like that. Just come to this party. He's like, okay. Goes, very normal party, very, you know, bougie, high end. <laughs> Drinks are flowing, uh, heavy hors d'oeuvres, beautiful setting. And then all of a sudden, all these uh, people come out with the black robes and, and hoods, and this weird ritual begins. There was something done to a child, but it wasn't murdered, but it was. It was foul. And he was a bit horrified. And then they came over to him and said, "Um, we understand that you're interested in increasing your income. And he goes, well, I I don't know about any of this. Yeah, (laughs) I just wanted to, like, a get rich. And they were like, you know, (laughs) like, yeah, he's like, well, we're not going to ask you to do that. Well, you can just give us one of your children. He goes, what do you mean give me one of my children? They go, just spiritually, not physically. And so he says, well, then you can have my daughter. I don't know, you look at me like that because I have the same mentality. Who would do this? But for some reason, he just had the influence over him that he would do it. Within 24 hours, the daughter starts having nightmares, then night terrors, then she's suicidal, and the father knows what's going on. So he finally tells the wife, and the wife is, you know, as you can imagine, she's through the roof, so she calls the bishop, gets the exes involved. The exes says, this is a high-powered group running around Rome that this is not the first case we've heard of, but they're not going to let you out. So we can do the exorcism of your daughter, but then you have to leave Rome. And he packed up and moved to South Italy because he was frightened from these people when he saw what they did. So you don't have to believe it, but that doesn't mean it's not real. Right. And and when, when you see these sorts of symbols all over the place, in your face, from Hollywood or wherever else. 
you have to think, okay, well, the symbols mean something. Someone's making, some producer is making the choice to put this symbol out there. Yeah. People are engaging in these things. Even the videos that come out of all these weird secret societies where, you know, one of them, they're worshiping a big owl statue or they're... they're yeah, the they, Bohemians. The Bohem- yeah, the Bohemian Grove or the, you see these, uh, uh, I know of certain rituals, you know, from uh, secret societies at my own alma mater where, and everyone thinks they're just kind of fun and... You know, okay, you get into a coffin or something like that. And probably the people doing it just think it's kind of a fun thing. But it is, but you are doing it. It is a ritual. You, even if you think it's just a silly little act to go worship an owl in the woods. Well, why are you doing it? Does it, does it have some meaning? Yes. And because we're corporal beings, we have bodies, um, what we do matters. What we do matters. And a lot of people think, well, I didn't mean anything by it. Well, that doesn't matter. When I do this, right. the Lord knows I'm invoking the Trinity. Now, if a pagan does that, are they invoking the Trinity? No, but it probably still gets the Lord's attention. Oh, mm-hmm. look, there's somebody making the sign of the cross, but they don't know us. Maybe we'll go visit them. The devil does the same thing. You know, a lot of the, the ritual things people do, a lot of the yoga movements were originally tied to spiritual entities. And so when you make the movement, even though you're not thinking I'm inviting this thing in, maybe you are. So I tell people, you know, be intentional with what you do and, and, and do the things you desire to do and don't do the things you don't mean to do. Because what a horrible thing to go through life not knowing that all the things we do actually have an impact in um, the spiritual climate. You know, when I sin, even if it's a personal sin, pornography, yep. It has effects on other people. Right. It's, it, this we saw in religious life. Because when you live in a house with nine guys, you know, when one guy falls and commits a, a, a sin against lust, that spirit goes through the whole house. Hmm. And the next morning, everybody gets, comes down to breakfast and is like, so who's the idiot who... Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can feel it because then you're all attacked. And then if if you're honest in the, with each other, as usually religious are, yeah. it's like something's in the house. Did anybody get attacked? Oh, yes, I did too. I did too. And then we'll be like, I'm sorry, that was probably my fault. When, when we're talking about these groups, you know, you mentioned the Bohemians or all these weird kind of cult things. It's often powerful people who are associated with them, all the stories about the Freemasons. And who, uh-huh. And then you think, well, it says right there in the gospel that the devil is the prince of this world mm-hmm. and there are principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. So it, not to get too far down the rabbit hole, but I've been convinced over the last three years that the difference between a conspiracy theory and the truth is about six to nine months. Is that stuff just all true? What stuff do you speak of? That these weird societies that have weird black hoods that show up at these cocktail parties in Rome with the canapé and the champagne, that they actually exist and powerful people are parts of... They do exist. And they they believe it. I believe the elite are part of it. Would I say every rich person is involved? No. Like there's the St. Edwards out there. Yeah. But I think at a certain level you get invited in, just like that doctor, right? Hmm. And he's certainly not at that level. But there is a story... I came upon about a year ago of a Swiss banker at the highest level of banking. So we're talking global banking of billions and billions and billions of dollars. And he was also brought into this whole group where they were doing human sacrifice. And he knew he was going to have to do it at some point. And so he went to a, um, a journalist and recorded everything. And he said in, in his you know, basically his story of what was going on. Um, I don't expect to be alive in a week, but this has to be told. And three days later, he was found face down in a bog, dead. And, you know, when, when that happens and somebody has the nerve to step up, um, you don't risk your life for something that's not true. Hmm. Right? Right. 